Hello, everyone, and Happy New Year. I'm your show creator and host, Laura Adams. I want to welcome you to the first Money Girl podcast of 2018. If you're ready for more knowledge, resources, and motivation to manage your money the best ways possible, you are in the right place. My mission is to help you live a richer life in every sense of the word. If you're a longtime listener, you know that each episode is kind of like a mini training. We cover a wide variety of topics like credit, debt, investing, real estate, business, taxes, insurance, money management strategies, and lots more. And if you're a new listener, I am so thrilled that you're here, and I hope you'll stick around by subscribing. You'll find the notes for each show and the full archive of podcasts in the Money Girl section at quickanddirtytips.com. This is episode number 525 called New Year Financial Planning, Five Steps to Create Your Money Strategy. I am super excited to kick off the year with this show about creating a money strategy. This is important. This is something we all need to be doing, and I think the new year is a great time to do it. Certainly, if you're listening to this in the future, you can create a money strategy and a financial plan at any time. But the new year is a great time to reflect about what went really well last year and what we want to improve on this year. Through good times and bad, I think having a strategy for managing your money is the key to creating more security. So if you don't already have a financial plan or you're just not sure what you should be doing with your money, it's a great time to get more clarity. So stick with me and we're gonna cover five action steps to create a plan that allows you to have more control, peace, and a better financial future. So here we go. Step number one is understand your current financial situation. So the first step to creating any plan or strategy is to understand where you are right now. And I have a really great tool that can help you do that. It will help you assess your current financial situation in a very simple document that I call a personal financial statement or PFS. And if you've read any of my books or audiobooks, you've heard me talk about a PFS before. You can create it by hand on paper or get a little fancier by using a computer spreadsheet like Excel or even a Google Sheet. The purpose of creating your PFS is to centralize everything you own and everything you owe in one place. So you get a bird's eye view of your entire financial life, and that allows you to easily see what you want to change or what you need to change. So to create your PFS, what you do is first make a list of all of your assets and their current values, such as cash accounts, investments, real estate, vehicles, and expensive personal belongings. Then you list out your liabilities. So those are all the things that you owe. Maybe you have a mortgage, a car loan, student loan, or credit card debt. So list out all of their outstanding balances. When you add up your total assets and subtract your total liabilities, what you're left with is your net worth. So whether it's positive or negative, the net worth formula is very simple. It's just assets minus liabilities. So figuring your net worth isn't difficult. It just takes a little time to gather up all your information and accurately record it all in one place. For example, if you own a total of $150,000 in assets and you've got $125,000 in debts, your net worth is 25000 And this number is going to change depending on, in some cases, the day that you're doing it. But I recommend updating your PFS every year so that you stay focused on increasing your net worth over time. And you'll do that by increasing those assets, shrinking your liabilities, or ideally doing both at the same time. Having a higher net worth year over year shows that you're getting healthier, at least in a financial sense. But if you see your net worth sliding, if you see it declining over time, that means that you probably have too much debt that needs to be addressed sooner rather than later. 
And if debt is something that you're struggling with right now, either feeling like you can't get over your debt or you're not sure how to prioritize your debt or you're just feeling uncomfortable about having any amount of debt, I have a resource for you that I'll tell you a little bit more about at the end of the show that I'm really excited about. Okay, step number two, decide what you really want to achieve. You probably know that you should have financial goals to steer your decision making, right? Well, sometimes we don't set goals because we really don't know what we want, or it may seem too difficult or even like a waste of time if we don't know exactly how to attain specific goals. Maybe you've created financial goals in the past, but they didn't help because you completely forgot about them just a few weeks or days later. Yeah, I've been there too. So I want to encourage you to try something new this year. I recommend using a completely different way to think about success with your finances that I call your one money objective. What this is, is a single word or even a short phrase that gives you an intention or a direction for your entire financial life. The idea is that instead of trying to focus on too many big financial goals, staying laser focused on a single idea or a single achievement can feel much lighter and simpler. Having a one money objective can make you more effective when you're faced with a major money dilemma or when you just need a fresh perspective to get your finances back on track. Boiling your financial strategy down to one word forces you to get to the point and it's much easier than trying to remember than a huge overcomplicated plan. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't have big challenging financial goals. But what I am saying is that financial success comes as a series of small wins. You make one good decision, and then another, and another, and over time, the positive effects of each small decision build up for massive success. So take a moment to choose one word or phrase that encapsulates what you really want to achieve with your money so you can live it with gusto, passion, and clarity. Dig deep to uncover what financial activity or concept drives you and gets the results that you want more than anything else. Your one money objective may remain constant for your entire life, or it could be a word of the year that captures your aspiration and motivation right now, and then you reevaluate it in 12 months. You can ask yourself the following questions to help figure out what your one money objective should be. What am I disappointed about in my financial life? What worries me the most about my financial future? What would I be proud to accomplish with my money over the next 12 months? What would I be proud to accomplish over the long term with my finances? Stop and think about those questions for just a moment and maybe even jot down the answer if you're somewhere where you can write something safely. For example, if you want to pay off a credit card over the next year, maybe your one money objective is no debt. Or perhaps you're disappointed that you didn't save money on a regular basis for an emergency fund last year. Your objective could be consistent savings. My one money objective is and always has been retirement because I'm passionate about investing enough so that I'll always be able to maintain my lifestyle if I can't work or I want to work less. Once you're clear about achieving one main goal, then you can work backward to chunk it down into smaller goals that are more specific. Financial goals don't have to be complicated, but each one requires an action plan that breaks it into bite-sized pieces that you can work on over short periods of time. For instance, if you want to pay off a $6,000 credit card debt this year, create a goal to stop making new charges and pay $500 a month or $125 a week to the card. Or you could save that amount each week or month to build up a $6,000 emergency fund within the next 12 months. Okay, step number three is review your spending. After considering the big picture of your finances by completing your PFS, your personal financial statement, and what you really want to accomplish with your one money objective, turn your attention to spending. 
Start by looking at how you've spent money over the past several months and where you can cut back. Get aggressive about carving out more money for what you really want to achieve, especially if you're living paycheck to paycheck right now and you just can't seem to get ahead. But even high earners can outspend their income, and many do. If I reviewed how you spent money over the past 30 days, I could tell you exactly what you value, such as clothes and nights out with friends, or investing for the future and paying down expensive debt. Getting clear about your priorities and values is so powerful because it turbocharges your financial willpower and your spending habits. Every action you take, including your spending, either builds up or breaks down your values. When your financial life just doesn't align with your values, you know it deep down in your soul and you probably feel unhappy, anxious, or worried. Controlling spending is a key to living below your means so you have money left over to save, invest, and pay down debt. That's how you build wealth over time and achieve your dreams. I'm not saying that it's easy because controlling spending is a struggle for most people, including me. But being aware of the dangers of impulse spending can help you resist it. The cost of small things add up over time and can rob you of the ability to create financial security. There are low-tech and high-tech ways to monitor your spending. You could get a small notebook and jot down every time you spend money. Or you can use a money management program, such as Mint, Quicken, or QuickBooks, to create a spending plan and track your finances digitally. The purpose of having a spending plan is to make sure that it includes your financial goals. For example, if maxing out an IRA is one of your goals, you'll need to allocate $450 per month for that purpose in your plan. That may force you to cut back in other spending categories, such as entertainment or eating out. If you're really not sure how you should be spending money, a good spending guideline to follow is called the 50-30-20 rule. It's a budgeting framework where you spend no more than 50% of your take-home money on fixed expenses and true necessities like housing, insurance, utilities, food, transportation, and debt payments. Then you limit the variable expenses such as dining out, clothes, cable TV, travel, and gifts to 30% of your income. And the remaining 20% is for your financial goals, like building an emergency fund and making retirement contributions. These are just rules of thumb that you can tailor to your situation and priorities. For instance, if you can spend 40% on fixed expenses, you could increase your variable expenses to 40% or boost your savings to 30%. If you're interested in learning more about these topics, I really want to recommend that you download the first two chapters of my award-winning book, Money Girls, Smart Moves to Grow Rich. If you haven't already gotten them, they're free, and they are jam-packed with information like your money mindset, how to create your personal financial statement, how to create a spending plan, the types of insurances you should have, the right amount of emergency money to accumulate, and so much more. You can get that free download when you go to my site at lauradadams.com. Okay, step number four is automate your savings. Once you know your overarching financial objective and you turn it into one or more savings goals, Putting them on autopilot is one of the best ways to be successful. Financial automation works so well because it protects you from yourself. Since it's so easy to go off the financial rails, we have to anticipate challenges and create ways to stay on track. So here are some great ways to automate your finances. You might participate in a retirement plan at work, such as a 401k. 403B or 457 plan. These work so well because contributions come out of your paycheck on a regular basis before you ever see the money. You might set up recurring transfers from your bank account to an IRA. As long as you have some amount of earned income, you're qualified to have an IRA. And I've written many posts about IRAs like traditional IRAs, Roth IRAs, SEP IRAs, 
If you want to learn more, you can go to quickanddirtytips.com and just type IRA into the search bar at the top of the page, and you'll see a lot of shows that, that will come up for you. You might open up a 529 savings plan to pay college expenses for yourself or a family member. You might use direct deposit for your savings by having a portion of your paycheck or even your tax refund sent directly to a bank savings account. And by the way, this is a great strategy to build your emergency fund or to save for short-term goals like holiday gifts or a vacation. Just have a portion of your paycheck split out and direct deposited into a separate savings account. The sooner you automate saving and investing, the more financial security you create for your entire life. And step number five is investigate options to reduce debt. Once you create a personal financial statement, you have your one money objective set, you're looking at goals, you review your spending to make sure you can pay for those goals, you may find that debt is putting a really big squeeze on your finances. If you have expensive debt, like high interest credit cards or payday loans, Stay vigilant for ways to reduce it or optimize it by doing a consolidation, a refinance, or a balance transfer. So I hope you'll join me by taking some time to create a new or updated financial plan this year. Challenge yourself to make some tough decisions that might be uncomfortable in the short term, but could really improve your financial well-being in the long term. Don't be afraid to turn to a professional if you need help such as a retirement planner, a tax accountant, a credit counselor, or even an insurance agent when you need help. Successful people usually seek advice, and they rely on professionals who specialize in different areas. They may cost a little money in some cases, but usually pay for themselves very quickly. And I mentioned a resource for you that I'm really excited about. This year, I'm launching a course that will teach you how to get out of debt and stay debt-free for life. You'll come away with a step-by-step process to reduce or eliminate credit cards, student loans, car loans, medical bills, mortgages, or any type of debt that you owe. So if you are on my email list, you'll get information about that. And if you're not on the list, you can text the phrase get updates with no space to the number 33444. Again, text get updates to the number 33444 and you'll automatically get information when this new resource is available. And by the way, if you have questions, comments, suggestions for future show topics, I'd love to hear them. You can reach me in several ways. I'm on Twitter at Laura Adams, L A U R A A D A M S. And you can also reach me on my contact page at lauradadams.com. Thanks so much for being a part of this community. Keep listening, learning, and leveraging your resources to grow richer every single day. That's all for now. I'll talk to you next week, courtesy of Money Girl, your guide to a richer life. 